thing as they come and speak to us. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Go get them. Good morning. Good morning. Happy Mother's Day. We are so glad to be here. Thank you so much. I am Tia, like Pastor Brad said. And I'm Katie. I think most of you in this room know me. And it is truly a privilege and honor to be with you this morning on such a day as Mother's Day of gratitude and thanksgiving to God for our mothers. We are excited to share with you. So thank you, Pastor Brad and staff, for having us here today. It's great to be back with family. Um, We are excited to share on this this day. And for a little background for those of you who may not know me, my husband and I came back to the Quad Quad Cities back in 2008, where he was invited on staff here as a youth pastor. And for the last 12 and a half years, we were privileged to serve alongside many of you. And recently, in the fall of 2020, we transitioned as Youth Alive missionaries to the state of Illinois, where we are partnering with students and churches across our state to reach their local campuses. As a big part, going back to Pastor Brad and his vision for this church in reaching others by sending them to preach. So Billy and I are an extension of New Life uh, Fellowship, our family here in this church, and we are honored to be here with you today. And so, Mom, how did you come to New Life? Well, uh, we wanted to be a part of the youth ministry (laughs) in our old age. But seriously, we did, uh, and we were a part of that, especially I was involved uh, when we first got here. And then we also want to just be celebrating with our family. Yep. And can you tell us a little bit about how the first Mother's Day began? Absolutely. There was a lady by the name of Anna Jarvis, and she had a mom named Anne. And back in the 1900s, um, she wanted to celebrate mothers. So officially, it was celebrated the first time in 1908. And then our president, Woodrow Wilson, made it a proclamation that the second Sunday in May would be the official Mother's Day from then on. Mm -hmm. All right. So again, we are honored to be here with our friends and family on this day of gratitude for the influence who have, of those who have gone before us in the faith, who have sown into our lives, and namely mothers, yes, or mother-type figures. Not everyone in this room is a mother, but you have a mom, and so we are grateful for them. But this message is not relegated to mothers alone, so men in the room, please listen. This message is both spoken to men and women, alike as a charge to the unique influence you have in the lives of those around you. As a continuation of the REACH series started last week, today we will be looking at the simple and yet foundational truth of... If you're a person, if you're a person of faith, God has called you to be a person of influence. You are called to reach out to those in your spheres of influence to the glory of God the Father through your actions, speech, and very lives. And for those of you who may not identify as a person of faith, please don't tune out because God has a plan and purpose and a destiny for your life, just like everyone else in the room. So lean in. Now, before we launch into the main part of our message with you today, my mom's going to pray and then point your eyes to the screens for a short video about the different kinds of mothers. Father God, we just thank you so much for the mothers and the others here, Lord, that are influential in our lives and have been, Lord. And we ask you, Lord, to reach down into our hearts today and help us to learn and know the foundational truth that you would have us to. We just give you honor and glory, and we praise you in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Heart of God. And so we start at the beginning. Taken from the side of Adam, gifted with bringing forth life, the first woman was named Eve because she was the mother of all living. But she was also a mother in her own right, the first of many mothers to come. Though Sarah's womb was closed, God promised nations and kings would come from her 
Ten years pass and motherhood seems as impossible as the day it was promised. But the Lord is faithful to keep his promises and Sarah bore a son who made her laugh. Leah was the firstborn, overlooked by her husband Jacob, who gave his heart to her younger sister. When the Lord saw that Leah was hated, he opened her womb. Despite Jacob's disdain, she found her motherhood in the Lord. When Pharaoh became angry at the fruitfulness of the Hebrews, Jochebed sacrificed her motherhood for the sake of her son. When Pharaoh's daughter saw the child, she had compassion on him. Because of Jochebed's sacrificial motherhood, the Israelites found freedom. Naomi was a mother who experienced the loss of her sons, yet she gained a daughter in Ruth who declared, for where you go, I will go. Your people will be my people. Your God, my God. Naomi and Ruth became family by faith. Mary, a virgin and not yet married, was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. The motherhood of this blessed woman was more than the continuation of a family name, but a means for God to bring a savior into the world to save his people from their sins. From the garden to the cross, there have always been mothers. These women paved the way for all women, representing the full spectrum of the ways one could be called mom. Whether a mother in faith, mentorship, adoption, or by birth, you play an important role in the stories of generations to come. To all the Sarahs, Leahs, Jochebeds, and Naomis, Happy Mother's Day. The promised mother of faith, and Leah was the forgotten birth mother. Jochebed was the sacrificial mother who gave her child up for adoption, and Naomi was the spiritual mother of mentorship. So from the garden to the cross, mothers have come in all different shapes, sizes, giftings, talents, and abilities, failures as well as shortcomings, and journeys of life. But no other woman on the face of the planet will ever be you for such a time as this with your unique abilities. To live a life of influence and purpose as you have been created and predestined for. So our message for you today is... If you're a person of faith, God has called you to be a person of influence. The main focus of our message today is found in 2 Timothy and will focus on the influence of the Apostle Paul and the two women named Lois and Eunice in the life of Timothy. While researching, I found a commentary on Eunice and Lois that came from gotquestions.org to give us a little background on their significance. In Acts 16.1, it says, Paul went first to Derbe and then to Lystra, where there is a young disciple named Timothy. His mother was a Jewish believer and his father was a Greek. Now, this is our first mention of Timothy, his mother Eunice, and his father. Then in 2 Timothy 1.5, Paul made reference to both Eunice and Lois, where Lois was either Eunice's mother or mother-in-law, and the fact that she helped rear Timothy may indicate that Timothy's father had died or that the fam family all lived together, which was not uncommon in those days. It is possible that the father had died while Timothy was young, since Paul takes on a fatherly role with Timothy and often refers to him as my true son in the faith, as referenced in 1 Corinthians and as well as in 1 Timothy. Then again, to recap, this is Paul speaking to Timothy in 2 Timothy 1.5. He says, I remember your genuine faith, for you shared that faith that first filled your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, and I know that same faith continues strong in you. And one of my mentors um, when I was helping with the youth department was Jeannie Mayo, and, and she says, one of her genieisms, mm -hmm. uh, he who spends the most time wins, which basically means you need to share your life and your time with those you want to influence. Mm -hmm. Paul knew that these two women had influenced young Timothy, 
his life and his upbringing because it was very evident. He had recognized the life-changing contributions of two women in a day when women were rarely mentioned by name. And then he even wrote about it. Lois and Eunice should encourage all Christian mothers and fathers and grandparents, reminding them that their godly influence has an eternal impact on the lives and futures of their children and grandchildren, as well as just your overall sphere of influence that you find yourselves in. Lois and Eunice are examples of the powerful influence a mother or grandmother can have on a young man's life. Many personal testimonies of the faith that I've heard always start to tend with, or start with mom or my grandma took me to church or taught me right and prayed with me every day. So mom, how then, relating to you, did the influence of your mother help to shape your faith? Well, my mom and I, we didn't always hit it off like normal, especially during those teenage years. But I do remember very strongly, my mom was a woman of prayer. And if she had an issue or a problem, she would call her praying friends and ask them to join with her in praying. She also studied the word. And I thought that was, you know, so what? But now I look back and I am so thankful, so thankful. Mm-hmm. So moms and parents are parental figures in the room and watching online today. We want you to understand three truths from these verses about Eunice and Lois's faith that should be true of ours today. So if you're a person of faith, God has called you to be a person of influence through? A faith in the Lord Jesus Christ alone. Paul is clear that he is speaking of the faith of their faith in the Lord Jesus Christ alone. He encourages Timothy here in 2 Timothy 1.9 when he said, 2 Timothy 1.9 says, For God saved us and called us to live a holy life. He did this not because we deserved it, but because that was his plan from before the beginning of time, to show us his grace through Christ Jesus. And again, when he said in 2 Timothy 1.13, hold on to the pattern of wholesome teaching you learned from me, a pattern shaped by the faith and love that you have in Christ Jesus. And even again, in 2 Timothy 3.14, Paul is reemphasizing, but you must remain faithful to the things you have been taught. You know they are true, for you know you can trust those who taught you. You have been taught the Holy Scriptures from childhood, and they have given you the wisdom to receive the salvation that comes by trusting in Christ Jesus. As Paul's words to Timothy are clear and resounding for emphasis, we also say to you, people of influence, if your faith is in anything or anyone other than Christ, it will not bear fruit and is therefore dead. So, Mom, what are some things that you would say people put their faith in that would lead to dead works? Well, I know that I have put my faith in many other things at times. Uh, We put it in education. We put it in our children. Mm -hmm. We put it in our bank account, our homes, the kinds of lifestyle we live, anything but what we should. But again, Paul said it over three times here. Your faith must be in Christ alone. Timothy followed the spiritual influence of his mother, who followed the, insp- or the influence of her mother, and they both placed their faith in Jesus Christ alone for their salvation and for their lives. And nothing is more important than your faith being founded in the person of Jesus Christ. Upon it, everything else will stand. But without him, your life is like a foundation laid in the sand. It will crumble and eventually fall because it's not on a firm foundation. So again, if you are a person of faith, God has called you to be a person of influence through a life of faith that is not only founded in Jesus Christ, but then secondly, a faith that is genuine. Second Timothy 1 says, I remember your genuine faith. The NLT says genuine. And that word in the original language means non-hypocritical, unpretending, and sincere. This teaches that the opposite then can also be true. A hypocritical, insincere faith can exist in a person. It also teaches that there is a difference between real saving faith 
and another kind of faith. And we can see this example in the Bible of Judas. He had this other kind of faith. He knew the Lord Jesus. He walked with him. He saw the miracles. He could testify to what Jesus did. He was among the other disciples, but his faith wasn't real. It was a hypocritical faith. Mm -hmm. It's not enough to be close to Jesus. We all know this. Just like going to church doesn't automatically make you a Christian. Jesus and who he was and the truth that he taught has to influence us deeper than just on a surface level. Moms, parents, grandparents, or parental figures in this room and online today, make sure your faith is in Jesus Christ and it is real. So how can we practically do this? Well, in 2 Corinthians 13, 5, it says, examine. Examine yourselves to see that your faith is genuine and test yourselves. So we can test ourselves by looking at the fruit of our lives. So let's talk about the difference between hypocritical faith and a genuine faith. Hypocrites were spoken of by Jesus in Matthew 23, verses 2, 3, and 5, where he said, The teachers of religious law and the Pharisees are the official interpreters of the law of Moses. So practice and obey whatever they tell you, but don't follow their example, for they don't practice what they teach. Then in verse 5, it says, everything they do is for show. So mom, can you explain what hypocritical faith is? Well, it's counterfeit. It's counterfeit. It's a pretense. It uh, looks good on the outside, but it's really hypocrisy. Mm -hmm. Going through the motions. Mm -hmm. So the majority of the chapter, Jesus focuses on spelling out their hypocritical faith through their actions. Actions of seeking honor and praise of man, or just having a head knowledge because their hearts were full of hypocrisy and lawlessness or how they ignored justice, mercy, and faith, but were also then full of greed, self-indulgence, and all sorts of impurity. So then on the other hand, Mom, what would genuine faith look like? Well, it's sincere. It's obvious. Mm -hmm. Sorry about that. (laughs) So in Matthew 7, verses 15 through 23, this sums it up for us. Beware of false prophets who come disguised as harmless sheep but are really vicious wolves. You can identify them by their fruit, that is, by the way they act. Can you pick grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? A good tree produces good fruit and a bad tree produces bad fruit. A good tree can't produce bad fruit and a bad tree can't produce good fruit. So every tree that does not produce good fruit is chopped down and thrown into the fire. Yes, just as you can identify a tree by its fruit, so you can identify people by their actions. Not everyone who calls out to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. Only those who actually do the will of my Father in heaven will enter. On judgment day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, we prophesied in your name and cast out demons in your name. But I will reply, I never knew you. Get away from me, you who break God's laws. Now, bringing it back to Timothy, remember in chapter 3, verses 14 and 15, it said from childhood he had known the Holy Scriptures. That word childhood in the Greek means infancy. Mm -hmm. That means his mother taught him the Holy Scriptures from when he was a baby all the way up. And you cannot hide something that is real And he must have seen this through the influence of Lois and Eunice in his life because it was consistent. Timothy saw it, and it changed who he was. It influenced him. This kind of genuine faith is concerned with heart change. It's concerned with what God thinks, not people. Fears the Lord and is broken over sin. It is evident and proven through your actions in living a life that honors God. This genuine faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God, by practicing what it teaches. Yes. So again, if you're a person of faith, God has called you to be a person of influence through living a life of faith in Christ Jesus alone. A faith that is genuine, and lastly, a faith that passes on. A faith that passes on. 
2 Timothy 1.5, going back to that, it says, again, from Paul to Timothy, I remember your genuine faith, for you shared the faith that first filled your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, and I know that same faith continues strong in you. Notice it began in, began in Grandma Lois, who passed it on to her daughter Eunice, and then on to Timothy. Please know that a transfer of faith is not automatic. Man, that would have made youth ministry so easy. Yeah. Seriously. Each of us must examine and exercise our own personal faith. You know this in Jesus on an individual and daily basis. We aren't like the latest technology with automatic updates or downloads. We don't learn it through osmosis. It's not something that's just thrown at us and we catch it. Passing on your faith to your kids or those in your sphere of influence is like passing off a baton and track. Both individuals are actively participating in the process. Yes. So, so Katie, you didn't have perfect parents. I didn't. <laughs> Can you testify to that? Help me, Lord. However, I know you must have caught a few things, you and your sister. So can you tell us about that? I think I caught a lot from how they acted, but praise God, I was an observer and I still am, and I learned some of the things that I did not want to do. Um, but I would say the most impactful thing that I feel you and dad did to influence my faith was by consistently prioritizing spiritual input, clearly and chiefly through attending church. Um, mom and dad would re-emphasize what I was learning at church, not through preaching at me the sermon that I heard or necessarily rehacking what they said, but um, it was really, again, I was an observer. I was watching their marriage. I was watching how they would interact with one another, but then also how they spoke with us. Um, and you modeled a lot of it for me. So I saw that what we were learning at church was also real and evident for you. And therefore I watched and observed just like Lois and Eunice were influencers of Timothy. I was able to, from a young time, see how your spiritual faith was walked out. Again, you aren't perfect uh, and neither was I, but um, I would say that Academics and sports weren't on the forefront of my life. They were very important, but you always made sure that we understood prioritizing our faith above all else. And so just like Lois and Eunice and Paul were people of influence in the life of Timothy who became a pastor, the pastor at the church of Ephesus, mind you, my life also speaks to many people of influence who have helped to shape my faith. Uh, kindergarten teacher Mrs. Bowers, who spoke to my natural God-given curiosity for digging in the dirt for worms to go fishing with my grandpa, or uh, taking a, a part of radio in class, uh, to former youth pastors John and Nancy, Tim and Tammy, and even Sunday school teachers who spoke wisdom into my ad adolescent years, spiritual mothers and mentorship like Heather, Mary, Lori, who have given me deeper insights into biblical truths that have applied to my everyday life, and countless friends in the faith. These people took the ordinary moments of life and spoke the truth of God's word where I needed to hear it the most. This is the easiest way that you can become a person of influence through your faith, and it's by first knowing the word of God, having that real relationship founded in Jesus Christ, and then doing what the word of God says as well as by listening to the Holy Spirit in the moments where he speaks to you and then acting on it. Don't let barriers like Pastor Brad said last week hinder you. The Holy Spirit is our partner in this life to empower us That's right. in those moments. And as Pastor Brad is going to speak about more next week. Mm -hmm. So as we wrap it up today, we want to say people of influence. Your life of faith needs to be in Christ alone. It needs to be genuine. And therefore, it will pass on and echo for all eternity. Mm -hmm. Taking your kids to church 
is a great thing, but it's not enough. Teaching them the Bible is a great thing, but it's not enough. Teaching them to stay away from sin is a great thing, but it's not enough. Your, your faith in Christ must be real, and it must be lived out every single day before your children or those in your sphere of influence so that they will see it and want it and want what you have. Mm -hmm. You may never know the impact that you have sown into another person's life. Amen. So in conclusion, to have influence, your life of faith needs to be in Christ alone, it needs to be genuine, and it therefore will pass on for all of eternity. Mm -hmm. So if you are a person of faith, God has called you to be a person of influence to reach those around you. Now I want to give God a moment to ref in this I want to give God this moment and us time to reflect on how he's speaking to us. So with heads bowed and eyes closed, I'd like to ask a question. For those of you who don't know if your faith is in Jesus alone or maybe haven't ever taken that step personally, or maybe you've, in this time of reflecting, begun to understand that your faith maybe isn't as genuine as you once thought. I want to give you an opportunity to be in right standing with God, which only comes through a genuine faith in Jesus Christ alone. The Bible says that if we confess with our mouths that Jesus is Lord and believe in our hearts that God raised him from the dead, we will be saved. God invites us to come to him by repenting of our sins and putting our faith in Christ alone. He gives us the opportunity to, uh, he gives this opportunity to every one of us. And right now, I believe the Holy Spirit is speaking to people and moving on hearts to make a decision in this moment. So if that is you, I'm going to count to three and I want you to raise your hand so I can know who I'm praying with or comment below if you're watching online. You know your faith isn't in Jesus or it's real and you want to be made right. So on the count of three, one, two, three. Comment below if you're online. I'll give you another moment. All right. Well, that means that we're all a part of the family of faith. So maybe you were one of those people who were thinking, maybe, maybe I have been living my life and putting my faith in things that are temporary. I know as even a youth pastors, I've caught as youth pastors here in this church, we've been so busy and caught ourselves in the moments of just seasons of go, go, go that maybe our relationship with Jesus wasn't as real or as deep as it could have been. Or I would put my faith in works and just doing. And I believe that if, like it was talked about last week, if you've been a person of faith for more than a year or two or three, you might get stuck in a rut going through the motions. But God in this moment wants to speak to us as well. I've been there. So I'm going to pray and just give yourself this moment as well to speak to God what's on your heart. But Father God, I just thank you for this opportunity to reflect and examine and test ourselves in this moment and be honest with you where maybe our priorities weren't straight or aligned with your heart, God. But I thank you, God, that we have breath in our lungs we are created in your image to bring you glory and honor. And Father God, I pray that our very lives would do that as sowers of influence into our kids, our grandchildren, our friends, and those we find ourselves around. God, I pray that we would truly be influential in this dark time. I pray that we would give hope to people by pointing them to you. Lord, may our lives so influence wherever we go. In Jesus' name, amen. 
So now for all of us in the room, by God's grace, he has called us to be sowers of influence. So as a token of our time here on Mother's Day, we wanted to give you a packet of seeds. This can be used as an ongoing object lesson if you have children or just as a simple reminder of how we are called to sow seeds of influence in the lives of others around us because our faith is genuine and rooted in Jesus. So mothers and ladies, as you leave today, people will be at the door passing them out. We thank you and we are honored to be with you today here on Mother's Day sharing with friends and family. Go and be blessed the rest of your day. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us this morning here at New Life Fellowship. I pray that God ministered to you in an incredible way. If you made a decision to follow Christ this morning and made a commitment, we would love for you to join us in a special class that we've developed that will answer many of the questions that new believers have. The class is called Fuel. You can find it located on our website at newlifeqca.org. On our website, you'll also find many of the upcoming events that we have, as well as other ministries that New Life Fellowship has to offer. I pray that you'll have a fantastic week. God bless you. We'll see you next time.